To me, the Uzi was crap, but believe it or not, there are two other Black Ops 1 submachine guns higher up on this list. There have been uh, hundreds of guns throughout COD history. Honestly, probably a few hundred at this point, but balance is always really important in a multiplayer shooter, and that applies to Call of Duty just as much as it does to everything else, and just like other games. COD doesn't always get it right. Today, we are going to be doing another really, really tough list, and this time, these are going to be my picks for the 20 worst guns in COD history. You guys let me know what is your pick for the worst gun in COD. See if I get this right or wrong. Drop a like, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on those post notifications, and here we go. At number 20 is the RK7 in Black Ops 4. Kicking things off is a gun that people initially saw and got hyped because it looked like a new version of the B23R, or maybe the RK5 from previous Black Ops games, but once you got it in your hand, you realized it was nowhere near those guns. It is a three round burst pistol with pitifully low damage, a very, very slow fire rate, and terrible, I said, terrible range. Look, I know it's a pistol, but even by pistol standards, the RK7 is weak. The stripe paint gun could outpower it, and the Mosu revolver was leagues stronger. I uh, think it's probably the worst pistol in Black Ops 4, and it did its older brothers a disservice. At number 19, we have the M16 in Advanced Warfare. Now, the M16 has appeared in quite a few COD games, and in all of them but one, it was a very good assault rifle. The best version, obviously, being the one in COD 4. But the AW version, well, it was added to supply drops a little into the game's life cycle, and while fans were excited about it, that excitement faded away when you actually used it. If you got it, it was very, very slow. The damage was much lower than previous versions. It had horrible iron sights, and the burst weapons in general were kind of a struggle in AW due to the advanced movement. It, the M16 is considered by many to be the worst AR in the entire game, and it pains me to put an M16 on the worst COD gun list, but I had to. Next up is the Uzi in Black Ops 1. Now, B01 really, really struggled in the SMG department. Sure, you had the AK 74U and the MP5K, but aside from those two, the entire category was pretty lackluster. One of the most noteworthy of the bunch was the Uzi. It featured some of the worst iron sights in COD history. Extremely high recoil, average damage, and a very, very slow reload time that would leave you wide open to counter fire after you burn through your shots, desperately trying to hit at least one of them. To me, the Uzi was crap, but believe it or not, there are two other Black Ops 1 submachine guns higher up on this list. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notifications on so you always get alerted when a new video goes up and you can get that elusive first comment. At number 17, the Draken in Black Ops 3. Now, sniping was pretty tough in BO3 due to the removal of aim assist and the addition of wall running. But you know how to make sniping even harder? Make the sniper a two-shot kill. This thing was a semi-automatic sniper that was a two-shot kill to the body and a one-shot kill to the head, but like the other snipers in the game, it had some very awkward handling. It made it really difficult to hit a shot, let alone two in a row, especially when everybody was jumping around and running on walls 20 feet above you. The Draken was the least used sniper in the game, and I think it deserves to be on this list. At number 16, the Kipparis, Kipparis, whatever, Kipparis, however you say it, in Black Ops 1. Now, the Uzi had huge flaws but it was still effective at close range thanks to its fire rate and its four-shot kill potential. However, I don't think the Caparis gets enough criticism at all. It was bad, especially when compared to the AK-74U and the MP5K. It featured average damage, a high rate of fire, terrible center speed, and a magazine of only 20 rounds with a very, very slow reload time on an SMG. It was just an awkward weapon all around, and it was nothing compared to the other guns available in the original Black Ops. At number 15, the USP-45 in Modern Warfare 3. Now, the USP first appeared in COD 4, then it was brought back in both Modern Warfare 2 and MW3, and it was a pretty good sidearm in the first two. It was brought down pretty hard, though, in MW3 and was considered by many to be the worst pistol in the game. It would deal as low as 17 damage, and it also had the lowest fire rate cap and the highest view kick of all the pistols, excluding the Deagle and the revolvers, which made hitting consistent quick shots very, very difficult. It was solid, like I said, in the first two Modern Warfares, but it was borderline useless in MW3. At number 14, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. The Mac 11 in Black Ops 1. Now, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think the Mac 11 was the worst SMG in the original Black Ops. I do. It featured okay damage and a relatively quick reload time, and it also had a very, very tiny magazine, bad recoil, weird iron sights, and it was generally just forgettable. I just wanted to forget it. 
Did you guys ever see this thing online? No, I didn't. It wasn't outstandingly bad, but the fact that it was so forgettable, I would argue, makes it the worst of all the SMGs in the game. Now you can't have a COD worst weapons list without a Dragon Offer 2. We're gonna go with the one in COD 4 at number 13, considered by most to be the worst sniper in that game. It was a semi-automatic rifle. It was a one-shot kill to the head and two shots to the body, but actually getting these shots on target was easier said than done thanks to the heavy sway, bad accuracy, slow reload time, and overall, the very awkward handling. The COD 4 Dragunov was quite literally just a worse version of the M21, which was also a semi-automatic and a two-shot kill, but it featured much less sway and hardly any recoil. The drag was basically just in the game to take up space on a weapons list. At number 12, the Scorpion and MW3. Now, it first appeared in COD 4, and while a lot of people didn't like it, plenty of others thought it was underrated. Eh? I don't think that there's any debate about it in MW3, though, because it was crap. The Scorpion in MW3 was a machine pistol that would hit between 20 and 30 damage and compared to all the other machine pistols. It had the slowest rate of fire, the smallest mag, the slowest reload, and the most unpredictable recoil pattern. But it did feature the best range of all the machine pistols. I'll give it to that. I'll give it that. But it was inferior to all of them in every other way, leading to many completely forgetting that this thing was even in the game. At number 11, we have the S12 in Black Ops 2. Now, it's pretty funny to think of now. COD players dread semi-automatic shotguns and auto shotties, but back in the early days of COD, they were nothing to be afraid of. A perfect example of this was the S12 from BO2, a semi-automatic spam shotgun that absolutely nobody used because of the horrendous damage in the range. It would tear people up super, super close, but all you had to do was, to make it irrelevant was just take a few steps back and you'd quickly be out of range. It was annoying in hardcore, but then again, so was everything in hardcore. Other than that though, it was crap. I think it's one of the worst shotguns in COD history. And now we're into the top 10, my friends. Let's start off with the Wah 2000 in MW2, the Wah Wah. A lot of people like to say, there's not a bad gun in MW2, and that's true to an extent, but when you compare the Wah to the other snipers available, it was pretty clear who the odd man out was. It was a semi-automatic sniper rifle that hit lighter than the Barrett in the intervention and was not as spammable or consistent as the N21 EBR, and overall, it was kind of just floating there. If you wanted a spam sniper, you could either use the EBR or the Barrett. If you wanted a precise one-shot kill sniper, use the Intervention or the Barrett. But, I mean, was there ever a situation in NW2 where you actually wanted to use the Wah 2000? I don't think so. At number nine, the XM-53 in Black Ops 3. Now, this was a standard rocket launcher in BO3 that could be free fired or locked onto enemy score streaks. Now, the reload was pretty fast and the score streak damage was good, but what gets the weapon a spot on today's list was its horrible blast radius and its damage output. For a rocket launcher, the XM was really bad at actually blowing people up. The blast radius was small, and if you wanted to actually get a kill with it, the target either had to be already weak, or you had to directly hit them with said rocket. Now this was, this was a massive frustration for BO3 players going for camos because one of the challenges was to literally get 10 direct impact kills with the XM. <laughs> it's one of the worst launchers in COD history, and there are a lot of them out there. Okay, and number eight, another Dragunov. Black Ops 1. Now, I mentioned it earlier and how it basically is a meme now because it's always a bottom tier sniper, but if you want to find the worst version of it, look no further than the original Black Ops. The COD 4 Dragunov was bad, but it was workable. The BO1 Dragunov, it's bad. It's clunky, it's not strong, it sways and kicks, the handling isn't worth the low damage that it puts out. Sniping as a whole was nerfed pretty hard in BO1, but the Dragunov was probably hit the hardest because its stats just couldn't make up for the changes in the mechanics of the game. At number seven, the HD40 in Black Ops 3. I was so excited when I saw this gun coming. I was so much more excited when I got it out of a supply drop. It was a HG DLC weapon. It was supposed to be a futuristic version of the iconic MP40, but it was nerfed into oblivion. It featured a very slow fire rate, awkward recoil, and just like the MP40, but the damage was extremely low, turning it into a slow and frustrating hit marker machine, as opposed to the beast that its big brother was. In order to make the HD viable, you had to load it up with attachments, and it was still pretty low tier after you did that. So take note, COD developers. This is how you don't bring back a fan favorite weapon. At number six, let's get some shotgun love in here, another one at least. The Olympia mb one Now this was one of those guns that was fun to use and definitely satisfying when your shots hit, but the cons definitely outweighed the pros, and I know I'm gonna get hate for this in the comment section, I always do. The Olympia was a double barrel shotgun. It hit pretty hard at point blank. Of course, it's a shotgun, but the shots would quickly disappear to thin air anywhere past close range. I know, it's a shotgun. It also featured an extremely slow reload animation, and since you only had two shells, you were gonna be reloading a lot. People definitely liked the gun for its unique traits, but in terms of actual effectiveness, 
That's why I put it on the list today. Cracking into the top five, the Executioner in BO2. This was another really fun gun to use and I'm not gonna deny that. It was a shotgun revolver hybrid, fun to mess around with in party modes and it was always a bit of a struggle when you had to use it in gun game, but Outside of party modes, the Executioner was borderline useless. The damage dropped off so fast, meaning you had to basically be barrel stuffing someone to get a kill. And then the reload animation was one of the slowest in COD history when it came to pistols. The Executioner was fun to use, but it didn't execute. Haha, <laughs> if we're talking about stats and actual usefulness, it sucked. At number four, the SVT-40 in World War II. This was the final rifle you unlocked in COD World War II and you would think it would be amazing. It would be a beast. No, it was a semi-automatic rifle featured an extremely low fire rate cap and some awkward handling. It made it super difficult to hit consistent shots with across the board. It also didn't help that the iron sights were meh and the damage felt a little inconsistent as there didn't seem to be much rhyme or reason as to when the gun took two to three shots to kill somebody. But with the cherry on the top, it was outclassed by literally every other semi-automatic rifle in the game. It just wasn't viable, and it was the final gun unlocked. At number three, the ASP. The ASP in Black Ops 1. This is just, it's just, shouldn't have been the ASP, it should have been the CRASP. The ASP was a handgun featured in the original Black Ops, and the handguns weren't stellar in the game, but this one was pathetic. It was a dinky little seven round handgun that would deal 40 damage at point blank range, making it a three shot kill, but it would quickly drop down to 20 damage, making it a five shot kill. And since you only had seven rounds in the mag, do the math. No extended mags for it, major problem. It also didn't help that the iron sights for this thing sucked and oftentimes didn't actually center. Despite its good handling and its fire rate cap, the small mag and the low damage makes this one of the worst handguns in COD history. At number two, the sawed off shotgun in Call of Duty World War II. Now I bet plenty of you COD World War II players remember this piece of junk. It was the final shotgun, once again, you unlocked. And it was even worse than the SVT-40. The sawed off could only fire two shells before reloading and it had a painfully slow reload time and the damage was insanely inconsistent. You rarely ever got a full 100 damage out of those two shots. It was bad. The range was awful and it had, it just, there wasn't anything good about it. Both the double barrel shotguns in COD World War II were pretty bad, but I'm honestly kind of confused as to how the sawed off, I mean, I don't even know how it even came out as bad as it was, let alone why it took so long to patch. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notifications on so you always get alerted when a new video goes up and you can get that elusive first comment. And at number one today, my friends, the China Lake in Black Ops 1. There is no surprise here. It was a grenade launcher in the original game and it didn't take long for the COD community to start making fun of it. It was extremely heavy and ridiculously clunky. It made you feel like you were walking in oatmeal. It was a liability, it really was. You were moving about half your normal speed when you had this thing equipped and when you actually fired it, you would expect greatness. The grenade would have to travel a certain distance before it could blow up, meaning it was useless at close range. And once the thing actually blew up, the blast radius and damage was minute. The China Lake was a total waste of space and there was no freaking reason to ever use it instead of just throwing a noob tube on your primary. This is the single worst weapon in COD history, if you ask me. And there you have it, my friends. Let me know where I got it right. Let me know where I got it wrong. What should uh, some guns have been that deserve to be on this list that didn't make it? If you guys enjoyed, drop a like. Make sure you subscribe, turn on those post notifications, and I'll see you soon.